Welcome to Downtown Sports, my name is Downtown Stephen Brown, and in today's video, guys, we're going to be going over four of the Maple Leafs selections on day two of the draft. They still have like six or seven more picks left in this draft, and we're at pick 137 right now, so I didn't want to make the video too, too long, so that's why we're doing the first four in this one, and expect another video tomorrow. And also, if you're interested in some good deals on some Toronto Maple Leafs Adidas jerseys, some authentic ones, maybe some retro ones, even some Calgary Flames and Edmonton Oilers... Link in the description if you guys want to check that out to my Twitter. But first of all, I don't think I went hard enough on this point in yesterday's video talking about Rodion and Amirov. The Leafs did not need to select a defenseman with their first round pick. They used the last two first round picks that they had to select Rasmus Sandin and Timothy Lilligren. A guy who's 18 or 19 years old right now is not going to step in and help them immediately on defense. So I don't understand the frustration in them drafting a forward in yesterday's draft when everyone that was available then is two or three years away. They need help on defense now. And that's not to say that the Maple Leafs are neglecting the position of defense. I mean, I will name these players specifically in a second, but that's a nice thing to boast about when it comes to your organization. I understand the frustration behind not dealing the 15th overall pick for immediate help right now, but then again, free agency is on Friday, Saturday, they got the rest of the offseason, maybe they do add one or two names like Elliot Friedman hinted at on defense there. This is another tweet that I had from yesterday here. People will critique Dubas for not drafting a defenseman with that 15th overall pick or not trading that 15th overall pick for a defenseman that can help the team right now. But he got Miko Leighton in a couple of months ago. He's NHL ready right now. And he's got six goals and six assists in eight games in the KHL this season. And people are going to say, oh, well, you don't really know what that player is until he comes over to North America. I would say that this guy's more of a sure bet than anyone that was available at 15th overall. You're going to call this guy a crapshoot, but some 18-year-old from the WHL isn't? KHL D-Man of the Year in Miko Leighton and Quebec Major Junior Hockey League D-Man of the Year finalist, who we will talk about in about a minute here. OHL D-Man of the Year in Noel Hoffenmeyer, best defenseman from the World Junior Champion Chess and Rasmus Sandin. Oh, they got Muzzin and Riley and Timothy Lilligren as well. A lot of the people that complain about Kyle Dubas and the lack of effort that he's put into adding to this defensive core really need to go back and look at what Lou Lamorello did to bolster this defensive core in the 16-17 season and the 17-18 season. Whole lot of nothing. Now that we got that out of the way, Ronnie Hervonen was the Maple Leafs' second selection in this draft. They traded down from 44 to pick up picks 59 and 64, and Ronnie Hervonen was ranked to go in about the beginning of the second round here, a little bit lower by some people, but this guy's 5'9", 170 pounds. That's going to jump out and stand out to a lot of people there. I want to point out his birthday because he's 18 years old right now, and if we look at his stats, he played an entire season in the SM Liga as a 17-year-old. While some of the guys that were picked in front of him were dominating 16 and 17-year-olds, this guy was the youngest guy on his team. And if you're looking at the grades here, like I pointed out in yesterday's video, a 7 or a 7.5 is very rare and very high to see on this list here. And he is a smaller forward, but that doesn't mean that he's not an intense forward. This guy competes really hard. He really gets in on the forecheck. He's really tough on loose pucks. He uses his stick effectively in all three zones, and he's got really, really good hands. You're going to see a trend in these picks, and that's that all of these guys have really high hockey IQ. With the Maple Leaf 64th selection, they drafted a defenseman, Topi, I, I'm not even going to try there. If there's anyone from Finland watching the video and they would like to sound out how to pronounce his name properly in the comment section, I would be greatly appreciative of that. He's six feet tall, he shoots right-handed, oh, he's 163 pounds, but I would like to point out his birthday, especially with it being at the end of March. This guy's 18 years old right now, but if we take a look at his Elite Prospects page here, you can see that he played 43 games in the SM Liga last season as a 17-year-old. So again, while defensemen his age that were drafted ahead of him were playing against 16 and 17 year olds, this guy was playing against guys that were all 5, 10, 15 years older than him even. And the best way to describe this guy by the reports that I've read is that he's a modern day defensive defenseman. He skates very well, he's very good in transition, he guards his own blue line, and he's very good in his own zone. Again, very high hockey IQ, knows what to do away from the puck. 
This is a guy that if he adds a little bit of weight on him, maybe 20 or 25 pounds or so, can be really effective in the NHL. Their 106th selection in the draft, the Maple Leafs drafted, Artur Atikimov. A six foot two goalie out of the MHL in Russia. And the MHL is like their equivalent to the CHL. It goes KHL, VHL, which is like the AHL and then MHL. Might take a couple of years to develop this guy and get him over to North America, but his numbers in the Russian Junior League are absolutely outstanding. William Vienyevu here, uh, I hope. I said that right. It's a very interesting pick because if you're reading the elite prospects description of this player, consistency is a problem in his game. But this is a guy out of first year draft eligibles was very, very good offensive. One of the best offensive defensemen available in this draft. And actually, he outproduced Jamie Drysdale in terms of even strength primary points per games played this year in the Canadian Hockey League. His skating is a question, and he's going to need to improve that, but he was nominated as one of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League's Defenseman of the Year as a finalist. And he's six foot one and 181 pounds. He shoots right-handed. I'm really rooting for this guy, especially if the Maple Leafs... I don't know if they still have access to Barb Underhill full-time, but a lot of you probably recognize that name. She's a skating coach that just works with a lot of different NHLers, and if they can get him some time with her... Hopefully, he improves his skating stride and gets that up to NHL speed. Because if this guy was an average NHL skater, he would have been a first-round pick. We'll throw one more name in there, so in the next video, we only have to worry about the sixth and the seventh-round picks, but I'm not even going to try to pronounce that last name, Dimitri. He's 18 years old. He's 5'11". He's 163 pounds. He's another forward. He was picked in and around where he was ranked. Uh, elite prospects is not... Too, too high on him. He is a flashy player. A lot of his highlights end up on Twitter and they get a lot of retweets and likes because he plays with a lot of pace. He attacks the inside, cuts through traffic, makes flashy net drives, and creates passing lanes. But again, that's just at the MHL level. We're going to have to see if that translates through. And he has played a couple of KHL games this year. It's interesting. For players that are playing in the Continental Hockey League, they're kind of just traveling everywhere and they're dealing with COVID-19 cases. So what we're seeing here is we're getting to see guys that wouldn't get an opportunity otherwise because they just call up an entire team basically to take their place. And he is a younger first-year draft eligible player with his birthday being towards the middle or end of August. So that season that he spent in the MHL putting up 55 points and 24 goals in 54 games, he did that as a 17-year-old. Gonna need to do some work on his game if he wants that to translate outside of the Russian Junior League, but he is an exciting player. So like I said, expect another video tomorrow going over the Maple Leaf 6th and 7th round picks just because I didn't want the videos to be too, too long here. So make sure to like the video if you did like it. Subscribe for more because more is always on the way. And guys, remember, we're really going to have to wait till free agency to really judge the Maple Leafs here. And believe me, if they flub free agency completely, I'm going to express my, um, Kyle, you're going to feel my wrath.